People keep asking me for an update on what's going on in my life when it comes to being disowned. What I've been thinking, what I've been feeling, what I've been going through, and uh, maybe it helps some of you guys out there in similar situations. Um, overall, no one has tried to contact me from my family. Um, the email that my cousin sent me went unanswered. Um, my response that I put in the video was the short version of a longer email with more personalized details. No response to that email. Um, I thought that if it was a real email about how he cared about how I was actually doing and how I was actually feeling, he would reach out again and say, we understand and actually try to carry on the conversation. Um, but as I expected, that email was just to get me to stop putting this on social media and telling people in the public uh, what's going on. I'm not doing anything by sharing stories that happened to me. Talking about that, I've received a lot of DMs. A random girl on Facebook DM'd me and said, hey, if you need to talk, I can help you. I know how you feel right now. I've been through all of this with my parents. Take that video down immediately though. You are a businessman and an entrepreneur. Your business is your business. Don't let them take that away from you too. I highly suggest you call me first thing tomorrow morning. And I was like, what? I don't know who you are. I've also gotten a lot of comments that are like, you should take care of your parents no matter what they do to you. And my response is, I did. I did take care of my parents no matter what they did to me. Um, but there's a limit. When it comes to lying to your children, when it comes to stealing from your children, when it comes to emotionally manipulating your children because they're your children, you have to stop. There comes a point where you just have to stop. And I know in other cultures, it's very different. And you live with your parents and you take care of them when you're older. And that's your job as a kid. But that's what you owe your parents. And I would respectfully disagree that you absolutely do not owe your parents anything. But I got a comment that said, let me ask you a simple question. How long did you live rent-free in their house? How long did they support you while you were growing up? A month, a year, 17, 18 years of your life? Think about what you're saying. Think of all of the facts before you say, well, they're capable but refuse to support themselves. Well, you were capable of working from the age of 13, right? Nothing stopped you from earning your way besides some who believe there are a supposed appropriate age to start working. You mean the fucking government? Some who believe there's a supposed appropriate age, like the law, the legal age, like some who believe it's, it's, it's the, it, what? Also, when I turned 13, I tried to start my own business, um, babysitting animals around the neighborhood. I also had a Pokemon card trading business to make money. Uh, when I was 14, I worked at Kroger as a bag boy. I did work. I did try to pull my keep, um, but I didn't lie to my parents. I didn't steal from my parents and I didn't emotionally manipulate my parents. But he goes on to say, they are family. Treat them like they treated you as you grow up. Otherwise, you will suffer the loss of them wanting to know you when they are in need of help and get refused. I responded and I said, let me ask you a question. If you choose to have kids, aren't you responsible for raising them for 18 years? It's very manipulative and very messed up when people say, I brought you into this world, you owe me everything. I didn't choose to be brought into this world. If you choose to have a kid, you are choosing to take on the responsibility of raising them all 18 years of their life. Parents are supposed to take care of their children. Children are not supposed to take care of their parents unless they want to, not because it is their duty. And, other, and people in other countries are just gonna disagree, but like, maybe if your parents were nice to you growing up, maybe if your parents didn't treat you like garbage and, and take and take and take and take from you, then yeah, maybe you'd wanna help them out when they're older. And last but not least, I get a lot of DMs that say, why are you sharing this private stuff online? Not cool. And I said, again, why should I keep it private? Why do you care so much? Like, people like you shame people into keeping issues private. People like you are the problem. So where do we go from here? I've thought about the fact that maybe one day they'll reach out and they'll apologize for using me like a bank. And they'll reach out and they'll thank me for helping them giving my all to them, giving everything to them. And they'll thank me out of love and they'll thank me out of appreciation and not just to get more money out of me again. But I've also had to come to terms with the fact that I'll never have the relationship that I have in my mind with them in real life. Um, before, I thought my father and I could both have booming businesses and we could make up for all that lost time when I was a kid of not having a father-son relationship um, when he worked all day and 
just ignored me. And I figured now, as grown adults, I've kind of figured out how to do this, and I could help him. And we could make up all that time and share our mutual interests now. I thought it would be cool to, to both get motorcycles and go explore Utah and like vlog that together and make like little videos where we go explore, you know, urban exploration and old mines. And sometimes I look around at other families that at least look functional and, and families that have good relationships with their children. And sometimes I think to myself, it must be nice. It must be nice. I wonder what that's like when you just need someone to talk to or they're just checking in on you or they just tell you, hey, we're proud of you. Hey, we love you. And they're not just saying that because they want something from you. It's just because it's genuine. And, you know, for a while, for the first few years of this, I, I would just really, I, I would get jealous. Honestly, I just get jealous of other people having functional families. And I, I, for some reason, I'm just stuck with mine. And, and it's just sucks. One of the things that really gets me is when I see families sharing things that I'm passionate about. And when I see those things being passed down in the family, uh, I feel like I'm missing out. I wish I was part of that family instead of my own many, many times. Um, I, I give you an example. What I mean is like, I'm passionate about aviation. I like flying planes. And whenever I talk to people that are getting into it, I would say like eight out of 10 times, everyone says, flying has always been in our family. It's just something that we've always done. You know, my grandfather flew and you know, my father flew and now I'm learning how to fly. And it's just something everyone is always done in my family and we all love it. And I just wish that my family had something like that where we could all share something. When I watch videos about people flying bush planes on YouTube and I see them all lined up and parked and you got the grandfather's airplane and the father's airplane and the son's airplane, you know? And it's just like, why couldn't I be part of a family that, that did something like that? That was like super cool where we all share the same passion. You know, there was none of that in my family. The only thing that was passed down in my family was this bullshit culty religious stuff where you get sent to church camp and all this other nonsense. Like that was the only thing that we had in our family. I sometimes wonder how people get started with something, with, with doing a, a passion or a hobby or living a certain lifestyle. And when I find out that their parents or their grandparents just helped them out, like I feel jealous. And I shouldn't, and I know it's wrong for me to feel jealous. Uh, and I just think to myself, it must be nice to have college fucking paid for. It must be nice to have your family show up at your wedding. It must be nice to have your family support you in graduating college. It must be nice to have your family help you do a passion project that you've always wanted to do. It must be nice to know that if you ever lose your job, you can go back and stay at your parents' house and they'll love you and support you and not make you pay rent. Or maybe they make you pay a little rent and you just do some chores around the house. It must be nice to have that because I don't have any of that. That's a big one for me when people say, oh, Josh, if you want to save money, just move back in with your parents, which literally doesn't exist for me. If anything happens to me in my situation, I have nowhere to go. I have nothing to fall back on, nothing. If I lose this house, I'm homeless. I, obviously, I, I think maybe some of you guys would let me sleep on your couch or something like that, but that's how it feels. I have no fallback when it comes to a support system in my family. Thinking about that is really kind of sad and depressing, but also a little bit motivational because it keeps me doing shit. It keeps me working, keeps me hustling because I have nothing, I have no, I have plan Bs, but I have no plan B, you know what I mean? So for all you guys out there who do have functioning families and do have a mom and dad that just pat you on the back and say, we love you, we're proud of you, not because they want anything out of you, just do me a favor, give them a call for me and tell them I said hello and that they're appreciated for being good parents. What's really funny is that just having been a week now that I didn't have to give anyone any money has done wonders for my mental health. There's no more, it's Thursday. I'm gonna be getting a text soon here from somebody asking me for money or from somebody asking me to give somebody money or, you know, it's towards the end of the month. Tomorrow's the first. I, I'm gonna be getting a text message saying, are you gonna put that money in now? I wanna go get a hamburger. Not having to give money to my parents and family has kind of changed my perspective towards my parents. And it's an interesting dynamic how money changes the relationship and creates so much resentment. Right now, currently, in my state of mind, I actually wouldn't mind hanging out with my mom. And I wouldn't mind hanging out with my dad as long as I didn't have to give them anything. As long as there was just a mutual conversation. But I know 
that would turn into the exact same thing. It would just be, you know, we want something from you. And the truth is that they need time away from me to get their lives sorted out. This is going to sound absolutely terrible. And it's not how I mean it, but I, maybe you can relate to this. I think my dad, as a person, just as a person, is great. He works really hard. He has a lot of skills. He has a lot of knowledge about a bunch of things that most people don't know anything about. And he can build good things and he can fix almost anything. You know, he's a dedicated worker. He does good work when he does it. He doesn't half-ass anything. But as a father, he's horrible. Horrible at it. Absolutely terrible father. And again, I, I said this was going to sound bad. I said this was going to sound bad, but I, just hear me out. Me and my dad never really had a relationship growing up. I never learned how to talk to girls. We never had father son days. Um, none of that, right? I had different interests as a kid than he had as a kid. And I think my dad kind of resented me for that. He was expecting me to have the same interests like uh, football and cars and taking apart things and putting things back together and just working out and all these things that my dad did as a kid, I think he wanted me to be interested in. And I just never, I was, I was interested in the nerdy stuff. I liked electronics and I liked video games and I liked being on the computer and the internet and I was introverted and I didn't want to go out and do that stuff. Like uh, one time when I was a kid, he was making me watch how to fix something. And he's like, do you not just enjoy taking apart things and putting them back together, Josh? Like, what's wrong? And I said, no, not really. I don't really think that's interesting. I don't know, I was probably 11 when he said that to me. And I think that just kind of solidified like, okay, my son is just not me. He's never gonna be interested in the things I'm interested in or was, and, and he just does his own nerd shit and plays Sega all day, whatever. And he just kind of wrote me off. And honestly, I think my dad was disappointed in me as a son. I was pretty aware that he was disappointed in me as a kid. He just, he never laughed at any of the jokes that I made. He never thought any of the interests I had were cool. Um, he just kind of did his job as a parent and just kind of said, okay. It was really weird to be aware that your dad just doesn't really like you as a kid. And he thinks that all your interests are stupid. That's a really weird dynamic and you just kind of exist in his household and you want a relationship with your dad like i wanted a relationship with my dad as a kid and so honestly i tried to change my interests or i tried to pick up his interests in high school to kind of impress him which is so stupid to think about now i signed up in high school to play football i had absolutely zero interest in football i don't give a fuck about football it doesn't mean shit to me but i know my dad played football in high school and so I signed up to, to play it and I did like three or four training sessions and I quit and I remember like crying like hysterically as like a 16 year old kid thinking my dad is going to be so disappointed in me because I just quit and I didn't I, I, like I'm not gonna be on the football team now because when I first told him I'm signing up to play football I brought the paper down I was like hey dad I want to sign up to play football he's like oh really Josh like his eyes got real big and he's like really you want to play football and I was like yeah and so he took me down there and we signed it up and he was like super excited to take me out of the sports stores and get me all the sports stuff. And then I did a few sessions and I was just like, this isn't for me. I can't force myself to do something. I just have absolutely zero interest in to impress somebody. So I quit. And when I quit, I walked off the field and I cried and I gave my gear to the coach and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is not doing it. I don't like it. And my dad was like so disappointed in me. And that was basically the relationship I had with my dad as a kid. Uh, zero. Didn't exist really no kind of father figure growing up. Um, I had an uncle that kind of like brought me under his wing. He was, he, was, he was a good dude. The only time the relationship between me and my dad changed was when I was about 20 years old and I worked for him and his business for a summer. It was the first time me and my dad ever got along. You know, he was working a job that he didn't hate and I was grown. It had been a few years since we seen each other since I left to go live in Finland. And it was like we were both grown men. We hadn't seen each other. We came back and we were just kind of bouncing stuff off of each other. And he was laughing at my jokes for the first time in my life. He was kind of like, yeah, dude, let's do this and let's do that. And I was like, cool. And whatever, we got along. Or one time I dressed up exactly like he did to go to work. I put on the exact same shirt and I tucked my shirt into my Levi blue jeans that I 
went out and bought and I put the same exact belt on and my dad smoked cigarettes and I put a little packet, little carton of cigarettes and the little little pocket protector, whatever. And then uh, I went to go get my dad. I was like, hey dad, let's go to work. And, I, and he laughed and he thought it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> When that happened, when that relationship dynamic changed with my dad, I started thinking, you know what, maybe I could salvage this relationship. You know, I've always wanted a relationship with him, maybe he's coming around and I can help him. For my mom, I would say, I would say it's the opposite. As a mom, my mom was great, you know, she was pretty loving. She tried to help support me when I was sad, when I didn't have friends at school. And I didn't want to go to school because I didn't like any of my classmates or whatever, right? Like, I just, she let me stay home. She let me do homeschool for, like, one year. Like, as a mom, she was a, she's a fairly decent mom, you know? She did her best. But as a person, my mom just isn't a responsible adult at all. Like when I found out that money had been stolen from my credit card, I called her and I said, uh, do you know anything about this? And she said, I don't know anything about the money, Josh. Ask your dad. To which I said, how do you think your bills are getting paid every month? Like you, you owe a lawyer, you owe the company, and you have to pay a mortgage? How do you think, like you never once questioned how you're not homeless right now? And she says, I don't know, Josh. I've never messed with the money. Your dad is always taking care of the money stuff. I don't know anything about it. And I'm like, that's kind of it's kind of strange. You've kind of been married for like 30 years. You should know something about the finances between you guys. Like you should step up and you know, like you're not working right now and he's working and how do you think you're surviving right now? I don't know, Josh. I don't know. I just garden. Just very kind of brushes everything off to my dad. Um, very just not a responsible adult at all. And honestly, I don't really think my mom has ever had to provide for herself fully. I think at one point she had an apartment and a job once like when she was young, but I don't think there's ever been a real life scenario where she's ever had to kind of step up. Here's the thing, being able to see all this stuff from a distance has kind of just enabled me to accept them for who they are. Some, you know, when this first happened and when it was happening, I would absolutely hate them and resent them and just, I don't, the horrible people. And now I just think that they're people. They're people with their own demons, they're people with their own problems it just didn't work out. They're my biological parents, and I wish them well, but we just aren't compatible as a family, and it will never be family first. As far as I'm concerned, I'm an orphan. I've gone through a few mental exercises to kind of prepare for the worst, such as, what if no one in my family never talks to me again? What would that actually be like when I'm old and everyone dies off? Will I get notified if my grandparents are sick or if they die? Will I get an invitation to the funeral? No. Then so be it. This was really hard to accept at first. This was really kind of, put, this, this, this is the sort of thoughts that you have that kind of like push you over the edge. And then it's just like, would you want to go, Josh? Not after the way that I've been treated. No, not really. What will happen to my parents? Will they ever try and reach out to me again? I don't know. What if they never do? What if they never come around? What if they never say thank you? What if you never see your mom and dad again ever? I guess then so be it. What happens if they die? Will you find out about it, Josh? I don't know. And so be it. And those are the thoughts that you have to prepare yourself for when you fully cut off your family. Everyone in my family is blocked on my phone. Everyone in my family is blocked to try and call me. But my family knows where I live. My family has my email. If they really wanted to talk to me and reach out to me, they could. Honestly, I don't expect anyone to actually make the effort to reach out to me out of love, um, especially because I put this on YouTube. They've probably, honestly, my family has probably just written me off as the crazy person who didn't accept the truth and the gospel and the religious culty nonsense. And so I will forever be the black sheep for doing this, which sucks. Because in reality, I'm probably the most logical and down-to-earth person in this family. I'm not even that religious, and I'd venture to say that I am more Christian than anyone in my family. It's sad, really. I've received a lot of positive support, and I've received a lot of offers to be ears that will just listen to me if I ever need someone to talk to. And for that, I am infinitely grateful. You know, it wasn't easy, but I'm fine.
the first few days were me swinging back and forth emotionally, wondering, you know, I wonder how my dad is doing. I wonder what he's doing right now. Is he still trying to get a job? Is he trying to make it work? Is he trying to hustle? Like, I want, I want to go find out how he is. I want to go see him, but I know that would not be, that's not good. And it was like that the first few days. And then after that, I'm fine. If you are going through something similar, I'd like to offer you my ear to listen. It's the least I can do for everything that you guys have done for me. Anyways, that's where I'm at over the past week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. I'll see you guys in the next one.